Okay, so now for question number five from the <coughs> sample assessment paper for pure, pure mass mathematics three at international A level. This question is about differentiation. And here we are asked to differentiate this um, equation y equals 5x squared minus 10x plus 9 over x minus 1 squared. And uh, of course, x can't equal 1, otherwise it will be undefined. You'll have 0 in the denominator. Now, we've got to show that dy dx equals k over x minus 1 cubed, so where k is a constant to be found. So it's going to be in this form, and we've got to find what number is going to be on top of this fraction when you differentiate. Now, when you differentiate something um, in this form, we can see that you have a fraction, a, a numerator and denominator, and uh, it's not kind of very easy for us to split up these into separate terms. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called the quotient rule, okay, where you call the u numerator u and they call, you call the denominator v. Now the quotient rule is actually quoted in the formula book, which is, I have a copy of this part that's relevant over here. And we see this part down here is what is um, the quotient rule, basically. Okay, this, this last part here. All right, so what they say, what they're saying is f of x is the numerator, so that's, that's your f of x, and g of x is your denominator. Okay, and this is the rule. Okay, f dash x gx minus f x g dash x over gx all squared. Okay, now I personally don't actually use this particular formula sheet. Um, I kind of like set up my questions in a particular way and then I know how to deal with it from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down u is equal to 5x squared minus 10x plus 9 and v is equal to x minus 1 squared and underneath u I'm going to write down the differential of u which is u dash which is going to be 2 times 5 which is 10x minus 10 which I'm going to write um, as 10 times x minus 1, just to make it a bit simpler for us to deal with. And the differential of x minus 1 squared, we could use the chain rule for this, which is pretty simple, which is multiply by the power, take 1 from the power, okay, becomes 1, and multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 1, so you end up with 2 times x minus 1. Okay, now, so what this means is, this is your f of x, and this is your g of x. And this is your f dash of x, and this is your g dash of x. So basically, you've got to have f dash of x times gx. So it's basically this times this. So I always just do this myself anyway. I normally just start always from the, the, the right side, and I go this way. I multiply these two together, and then I take away the product of these two, and divide by v squared. That's how I deal with it. Okay, so this is how I would go about it. I would multiply these two together, so I'm going to get... 10 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 squared. Let me just uh, make that a bit neater. <clears throat> then you've got minus, and then I'll multiply these two together. So I'll get 2 times x minus 1 times 5x squared minus 10x plus 9. And then I'll divide that all by the square of x minus 1 squared. So x minus 1 squared and squared again. So give me x minus 1 to the power 4, basically. Now, this is our dy dx, okay? This is our dy dx. I should have written that before, no problem. So dy dx is going to give a, given by this. Now, I could expand all of this out and then simplify, and I would get, you know, I should get a constant because it, they tell us in the end you're going to have a constant at the end when you simplify this. Um, uh, you'll have something that you can cancel off with this as well, by the way. But basically, uh, to make life a bit easier, if you look for common factors in these two terms and take them out, um, it, might, it might make life a bit easier. So if you look at these two terms, I can see there's a common factor of 2 and x minus 1. Okay. So I've got 2 times x minus 1 as a common factor in these two main terms. And I can see to get this whole term here, I have to multiply this by 5 and x minus 1 squared. 
right? When I multiply these two together, I'm going to get 10 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 squared, x minus 1 cubed, basically. And if I multiply this by, I have a minus, and if I multiply uh, 2x minus 1 by this bracket here, okay, which is 5x squared minus 10x plus 9, then that will give me this term. Okay, so I've got all of that over x minus 1 to the power of 4, because I'm going to square x minus 1 squared, it's going to be x minus 1 to the power of 4. Now we can see that this cancels out with this. So that leaves us with x minus 1 cubed, which is kind of uh, shows we are kind of on the right tracks, because you see we have that in the denominator, so that should make us realize we're on the right tracks. And then after that, we can now um, try to simplify the numerator, and we know that it should, oops, we know that it should end up being um, some sort of a constant. What am I doing here? Sorry. Um, okay, I messed up. No problem. Okay, so we know it should be some sort of a, um, a constant at the end. So we got here two times. Now, let's just expand this bracket. So this is 5 times x squared minus 2x plus 1. And you've got minus 5x squared and plus 10x and minus 9. Okay, over x minus 1 to the power of 3. And now... You have 2 times, let me just simplify this, this is 5x squared minus 10x plus 5 minus 5x squared plus 10x minus 9. Now it looks like things will work out fine here because it looks like these x squared and x terms on the numerator are going to disappear. You have 2 times, now you've got 5x squared minus 5x squared, well that gives you 0x squared. And you've got minus 10x plus 10x, which gives you 0x. And we're left with 5 minus 9, which is minus 4. So we have 2 times minus 4 over x minus 1, all cubed, which will give us negative 8 over x minus 1 to the power of 3. And there is our solution. And we could even say, if you want, k is equal to negative 8. Okay, so there we have it, the answer to that question. Um, as I said, at this stage here, at this stage up here, we could have actually, you know, expanded all of these things out, and then we would have found we'd have got minus 8, uh, well, minus 8 times x minus 1, basically, in bracket. Um, but it, just taking out common factors makes things a bit easier to simplify in the end, that's all. Okay, so that's why I looked for common factors. You can see x minus 1 and 2 are common, took that out, and then it makes it a bit easier to deal with the part inside, and we end up with our answer. Okay?